Hey everybody, Kenny here. Today's video we're going to be going over the game Chronicon. This is a hack and slash dungeon crawling RPG and like a sprite based Diablo. It's a very cool game. I highly recommend trying it out. I'm going to load up my Templar. It's been a while since I played this, so. Get reacquainted here. We move around using WASD. I don't know these do. So, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's uh, what's happening there. If you press Q, uh, that's uh, like that little circle you're seeing. If there's loot on the ground, then you'll automatically pick all of it up. That's what that is. The loot vacuum. That's what that is. Yeah, so I'm just trying to remember all the stuff I had with this character. <laughs> hmm. As I'm just gonna. Is the reason that I'm not seeing my damage because it's only showing critical damage? Is that what's happening right now? Their hit numbers. Go numbers, and hit numbers, enemy hit numbers. Ah, there we go. That's what it was. <laughs> there we go. I'm not sure what that was about, but we got it figured out. Now, uh, so as you would expect with most games in this of this type, uh, um, okay, okay. So you have our skill trees. Every class has four unique skill trees. And then you have the masteries, which for the most part, these are shared among all the characters. When I say shared, I don't mean that, you know, like if you invest in it here, then a different character is going to get the same thing. Like, you know, like, like if like this is at rank six, doesn't mean that a different character is going to have that at rank six as well. Uh, what I mean is that you know these are these are the same for all the characters, but uh, there are specific ones for each character. So how this one is for conviction, this one's for redemption, this one's for wrath, this one's for ve vengeance, which are the Four skill trees for the Templar. The way my Templar is set up is uh, Redemption and I think Wrath. That's Conviction. No, no. Guess I'm remembering wrong. Yeah, I must be remembering wrong. Yeah, so I'm. Fully invested in redemption. So by investing in redemption, I have a kind of a passive that builds up from investing points in the skill tree itself. So because I've spent a total of 22 points, I get a bonus to my holy damage. I get health on hit.
and so, <laughs> so that's uh, honestly a weird thing there. The four percent pickup strength is actually referring to like when I said that before that this is our loot vacuum. It it, it the, actually no 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 I I know what it's referring to. So when you're when you're fighting, there are like orbs that'll drop you know to like heal you and do different things. So I was referring to the potency of those. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> I said, it's been a while since I played this game, but. So I have a, a heal set up as my uh, right mouse button. So whenever I do that, my heal. You kind of see it. I see those hands rotating around me there. Then in our left mouse button, we have our Holy Bolt, which restores mana each hit. And it hits all enemies in a straight line. So... So it's a piercing attack that they invested in to be very effective. Now something I really like about this game. So if you like as you're going through these, most of the skills that you see here are passive that enhance the skill like the skills that you start with. And when you see these plus steins, the reason that these are there is that you don't have just one thing you could pick. So if I were to click on that, I have the option of Holy Hammer, Holy Blade, Hammer Storm. If I click on this one, I have the option of Holy Nova, Searing Light, and Divine Blade. So, the thing is to pay attention to when you look under the active skill, it says a Nova skill, a Bombardment skill, Bombardment and a Blade Conjuration skill. So my Healing Touch is a Utility skill. My Holy Bolt is a Base skill. But as you invest in different things... you can enhance specifically what you're working on. So I could pick something that... So if I were to select Holy Blade here, then this flash would have an effect based on Holy Blade as opposed to Hammer Storm or Holy Hammer. And same with uh, Shimmer here. And the other thing that I really like, I, so you see these, like all this, so the squares are active skills, the circles are passive skills, as is a standard for skill trees. But if you look at the different passives, and like a new, like so, like, like this one has like a lot of text in there. But something like you'll notice in these is that they will, like, they'll mention a skill. So I'm trying to find one. So, Expulsion. Uh, so, that's that. Huh. Right, so, I might have picked a bad ca character for this, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, like with most of the characters like, like you'll see something like that it will mention so uh, maybe in the other skills it does it mention oh, expulsion here we go yeah, so I guess 
This one doesn't, but the other ones do. Like, so you'll see that if you go all the way through the conviction tree, which is the fire spec for this class, then down this line where you get burning conviction, which increases your fire skill, the burning effect of your fire skills, and the impact damage, uh, condemption, which upgrades the burning conviction effect so that enemies who are suffering from that burn can explode when they die. And then purge through holy flames upgrades this so that it merges with the expulsion skill, which is what we saw here. So if you have expulsion, if you've invested in this, then it will be enhanced by using that. So you can see that going conviction and redemption, they have synergistic properties. And then go to wrath. The wrath is the lightning spec and get all the gen here. Yeah, so this applies burning conviction, which is this again. Then this is the vengeance tree, which which a uh, uh, phantom So static overload, which was this one. Nope. This one. No. Which was static overload. This one. There we go. Yeah. So you know, so you so you have you actually have really good synergy to invest in the different trees. So even though I went this way because this is the character that you know, I made to learn how to play the game with. Because I was like, oh, this guy's, they have a heal. So I can... I can just invest in heals. <laughs> but, but you don't have to play that way. You can play it any way you want. I can they give you lots of great options. Uh, since obviously it's a dungeon crawling game. You know, loot plays a big role. So I found a lot of equipment that I use to improve this character's damage, health, and resistances. But also, like, you get something like Nova, which causes a satellite orb, which, so that's, uh, this spike ball here is because I'm wearing that. Then, because of the Shadow Stone, I have the Shadow Orb, which I think is this one. Then, this down here, the Supernova, uh, is the frost orb. Okay, so this is the shadow orb. This, yeah, I, I can. I'm I'm making assumptions here because it's really hard to tell from the graphic. <laughs> like I'm thinking that that looks like snow falling off of that. I mean, this definitely doesn't look like a shadow, but yeah, one of them's a shadow orb. So I'm guessing it's that one. <laughs> then the hands probably. Yeah, so actually that's probably that's probably from my build. The hands there. Yeah, plea. So all active in a slot. So when you see these ones that are like an octagon. They fill these slots here and they have uh both passive and active effects when you see whenever you see ones like that so so you know so so it's like they're so it's like they're both an active skill square and a passive skill circle which is cool so while it's active it gives you 
Well, actually, while it's in the slot, it gives you health and mana on hit. And then when you use it, it doubles the effect of it. Very cool stuff. And, like, you know, you have a skill trainer right here. So if I wanted, I could go and uh, reset everything and try out something else completely. But, you know. But that's not what we're doing right now. I just want to show the game in action. I'm going to go to... I don't know. Garden. Yeah. Yeah, so just seeing stuff. Explode like crazy around you. Yeah, so very chaotic, very cool game. Oh. So, <laughs> like the reason that I, I decided I was going to show using this character instead of my mother characters is that this character is basically immortal because of the build. <laughs> like the character that was probably be like the most interesting to show is my... Uh, my, like, warlock type character. But the reason I'm not showing that is because, as you can see with with the, the chaos of, of fighting enemies, that character dies very easy. <laughs> very fun to play, but dies very easy. I figure doing it this way, you get to see more. <laughs> yeah, but the idea is, you know, get around to get the best loots. While making these really crazy builds with like yeah, you know, lots of lots of orbitals and and just kind of map clearing effects. And understand, this is like you saw from when I was at the hub area. I'm still in the first zone of the game. <laughs> Like when you start the game, like it's it's actually like pretty tame, like the way that everything is. But you you get to these levels of power very quickly. Super cool. Yeah, but I, but also like if you want to like level quickly in the game, then actually the most efficient way of doing that. Now this character isn't honestly like this character is not designed to so you can see that slaughter because it had all those kill like so. Like, the way that you want to do it is instead of aiming for these uh, these kind of super groups, what you want to do is you kind of, like, want to lure them around with you while you're killing, like, little, like, little simple groups. So that way, like, by the time you kill the stronger enemies... Like, you've already amassed these, like, huge multipliers. And then, by the time that multiplier pops, you know, by, by the time everything pops, you get these... These, like, really, like, huge, uh, like, like, XP bonuses, which is very cool. Like, I like when games put, like, extra mechanical ways for you to improve the game... Just by par you know, just by doing the thing that's fun to do in the game. In this case, you know, what's fun is to run around killing things. Uh, <laughs> so the more efficiently you can run around killing things, the faster you improve to being able to further <laughs> run around killing things even faster. <laughs> yeah. Lots of great chaotic fun. Accidentally press something. There we go. Yeah. So the reason I'm... Like, the reason I'm intentionally not killing anything... Is just that... I mean, not killing. <laughs> Obviously, I'm killing lots of things. The reason I'm not picking up any items... Is that... 
like, you know, the, your, your inventory space is kind of limited. So you kind of only want to be picking things up that could possibly be an upgrade or maybe like, you know, like worth selling. Because, you know, like, because that as is, like, if I was to press alt. Oh, that's right. I have my new filter on, so I actually, I actually can't see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we had a very nice uh, experience boost there. But yeah, but like, see that, because I, like, yeah, like, you'll see that, like, when there's something special, it'll have the little dot, so you know that. You can pick it up. Since these don't have that, that means that the game doesn't consider them worth grabbing. <laughs> I'll grab that. Like, these scrolls are worth getting because they... Like, the scrolls you can kind of make part of your build. Like, you know, like obviously, you know, they, they're consumables, but... What makes them interesting is that like you actually want to you actually want to use your consumables in this game. Like it actually made in a way where you're actually like, oh, like I want like I want to try out this spell and see what it does. I want to you know like see how it affects the like the mechanical nature of how I'm doing everything, you know. Very cool. Yeah, some of you may be thinking that, like, I was, I was very much like kind of down talking this build before because I was saying that it's it's nowhere near like the most visually impressive build <laughs> uh, that I currently have and that remains true I guess just that this game is just a absolute chaotic spectacle <laughs> which makes it very fun to play and definitely worth your time if you're looking for a <laughs> just a loot fest type game. And the ghosts can be a pain because they warp in and out of existence. So you'll hit them, and they'll fade away, and you gotta wait for them to come back. But, but still, chaotic fun, no matter what. <laughs> This one's still alive. There we go. Finally got that one. <laughs> there are the little stat demons there. So. So, anyways, that's that's Chronicon. Very cool game. Highly recommend trying it out if you're into this type of game. If you're a fan of like Diablo or anything like that. It has 
everything that you'd want from this type of game. And you can actually get it. Like it goes on sale pretty regularly. You can get it for like 10 bucks, sometimes less. But honestly, paying full price, you you know, like you're you're getting your money's worth no matter what. Very good game. Lots of awesome build variety. Because, you know, because what you saw in there, that's just, you know, because of gear that I happened to pick up and fully investing in just one of the skill trees. <laughs> and really, I, I only have three skills. Like, this character is all just this, this, and this. And I didn't even use this the entire time. I, I mean, I used the passive effect, but I never bothered boosting it the whole time. Because it was unnecessary. But yeah, but lots of like, games like this. Like are always like a ton of fun to try to check out. Like uh, there's another one. I think it's called uh, Slower Mancer. Very similar. Uh, I prefer Chronicon more, uh, but Swarmancer I think is still in early access, so it could improve over time to uh, to be better than. Actually, is this Swarmancer? I think it is. <laughs> like that game, I think looks better than Chronicon, but Chronicon is definitely. The more fun of the two to play currently. So, yeah. Definitely give it a chance, and I'll see you guys next time.